Hey everybody, hunter, fisher, trapper, trader, guide, scout, and interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Man, we got us a fryer outside, a Cajun fryer, and we're going to do a pork tenderloin in that, and when we get done, it's going to be moist and tender and crunchy on the outside, and all kinds of neat flavors, but come on over here, I'm going to show you how we're going to prep this pork tenderloin to go in the Cajun fryer. At Kroger's, I actually bought a seasoned pork tenderloin. That's why it's got a little color and some pepper on there. You can start out with just a regular pork tenderloin. And I'm going to prep this the way Jim Duckworth told me to do it. Jim Duckworth is a good friend of mine. In fact, you can check him out at fishingtennessee.com, and you'll see all of his DVDs, and he'll teach you how to fish. But with that said, he said to cut it about every two inches. Not quite halfway down. And here's the real trick to this. All right, now that we got our cuts on this side, we're going to turn it over and we're going to cut in between those cuts about halfway down. Not quite. Try to find their location over there. Where's the next cut? And I think the reason that Jim Duckworth wants me to prep it like that is because he likes anything that looks like one of those plastic worms you fish bass with, because he knows how to do that. Anyway, check him out, he's a hoot. Now we're gonna coat this with some breading on the outside, or just some dry rub. Now you can use stuff in the store that's for pork chops, or you can use your favorite fish breading. I'm using Shotgun Red's Catfish and Crappie Breading Mix on here. Work it down in all them little cracks, and get it on the end pieces. And that's gonna allow that oil to get down in there and it's also going to put a nice crust on the outside of this thing. And I think we're just about ready to go to the deep fryer. Might as well pour the rest of it on there and see what we can do. Now this pork tenderloin only weighs 1.7 pounds. So at 5 minutes per pound, you're only talking about, you know, 7 to 9 minutes. We're going to keep a close eye on it. And as it cooks and gets nice and crispy, we're going to slice in, make sure it's done in the middle. Then we're going to take it back in the house and plate it up. So let's take this down and get it in the fryer. Well every time I start this rocket ship up sounds like an F-16 fighter. I always get a few neighbors wander over want to know what you're cooking because you just might have a fish fry going or something. But we're getting ready to put this pork tenderloin in here. It's rolling up on 350 degrees so I'm going to turn this burner down on this thing. It doesn't hardly take any gas at all once it gets heated up to keep it at a nice 350 temperature. But come on over and let's plunk this in the grease. All right, now this is the two basket model. I'm going to get this down out of our way here. We're going to put our pork tenderloin in this basket here. Get him all looking the right direction. All right, looking good. We got some threatening skies going right now, like we might get some rain, but hopefully we can get this recipe in before that happens. So we're going to time this really crucial. I got exactly five minutes too, so let's drop this in the oil. Well, 1.7 pounds, five minutes per pound is what? About eight or nine pounds, or eight or nine minutes? We'll see what happens. At about eight and a half minutes, we're going to pull it out and give it a little cut test and make sure that it's done in the middle. We'll see you then. I really love this Cajun fryer. If you go to our recipe, deep fried chicken, I go into actual details of how the burner goes inside, makes a U-turn, comes back out and vents out the back. It's five inches off the bottom so nothing burns. The oil, you can use it for a whole year. Well, I guess I kind of gave you the whole example, but if you want to see it, check it out. But let's get back to cooking. You know how I always love to give you guys a peek. Here's five minutes. Doesn't that look absolutely fantastic? See you in another three and a half minutes. You know, I noticed something. I don't care if I'm cooking fish, I did a chicken, and even this pork tenderloin, it's starting to float to the surface where parts of the tenderloin are poking out of the oil. And I think that any of them, whether it's pork tenderloin or fish or chicken or whatever, as it gets done, it floats to the surface. So always kind of remember that. I started talking at eight and a half minutes, so I kind of finished right at nine minutes. Let this rest for just kind of a half a second here. We're going to move this onto our little cutting board. 
you see my electric play knife there, Sheila. Thank you very much. Let's take a peek. That is just so moist inside, so delicious, done for me. I'm going to cut it over here too. I might have bumped the camera there. Look at that. Boy, that's just absolutely, look at the juice come out of it, moist and tender. Now that's done enough for me. Would you look at our pork tenderloin? Just moist and tender in the middle. It looks fantastic all sliced up let's take it in the house crunchy on the outside and delicious in the middle and one other thing I want to give thanks to the man upstairs for not raining on us <laughs> Sheila great job with the camera let's take this inside well we just got back in from the Cajun fryer and this stuff looks and smells absolutely delicious and first and foremost I want to thank Jim Duckworth for giving us this recipe how to slice it how to season it how to cook it that guy knows those Cajun fryers, and he's talked me into buying two of them already, and I couldn't be happier that I did exactly that. Plus, when you see all these different fishing recipes that I do, there's two people that really taught me about fishing in Tennessee. One is a guy by the name of Harold Morgan, and the other one is Jim Duckworth, the guy that gave me this recipe. And he's got tons of videos on bass fishing, crappie, striper, how to build crappie beds at home and go out and put them in the lake. You can only do that in certain states, but you should check it out. Go to www.fishingtennessee.com. I'm kind of returning the favor here for all these wonderful recipes and that fryer. But www.fishingtennessee.com. Check out his stuff. Man, he's even got some VHS tapes for those that still have those old machines. But you'll learn how to fish like you never did before. But come on over. Now that this is rested a minute and I've been blabbing on, let's take a look at this. Jim told me no matter how many of these he cooks at the house, there is never any left. He said people will eat till they're just all done and can't eat no more than they keep going by and picking it off the platter, and I can see why. It's crunchy on the outside, it's tender and moist on the inside, and what a fabulous product this produces in that cooker. I'm going to try a little bite here. Probably going to have to stop tape for just a second. I want a piece that's tender, moist, and has that crunch on the outside. Wow. You know, I don't think I've ever ate pork so moist, so tender, so flavorful, so crunchy on the outside as this deep fried pork tenderloin. It is just absolutely an incredible recipe. And I think it kind of works out to be about five minutes a pound. I'm going just a little less. In fact, I'm going to keep checking it until it's just barely done in the middle. Then that's where I'm stopping the cooking process because I want it as moist as possible. You do it the way you want it at your house because these recipes are yours. As soon as you watch them, you can always modify them. And we really hope you subscribe to our channel. Little Shotgun Red's face will pop up over here in just a second. When you click on that, you can subscribe. And after you subscribe, you get next to that, there's a little bell. Click on that when the drop-down box comes. If you highlight that and hit save, it'll send you every single recipe that we post. Over here on this side, we're going to pop up another recipe that maybe you'll be interested in and click on and watch. But boy, I'll tell you, this has really been good. Is this the most delicious deep fried pork tenderloin you ever ate? If it ain't, it ought to be. Steve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee, and I did want to tag this as one thing. Years ago, Sheila's dad used to bring biscuits and pork tenderloin, and he cooked pork tenderloin almost all the time, about once a month to the church, and it was the highlight of their function. So this goes out to Bob Holland, and of course his daughter standing there running this camera right now, Hi, Sheila. Hi. Did you enjoy this? It is delicious. All right. We're going to eat some for dinner. In fact, the Alabama game's coming on in about 15 minutes, so we got to go. We'll see you later. Bye-bye for now.